first time going into 21. If Hudson Card beats out Quinn Ewers eventually for the starting job, will they be back in the same spot they were last year with him and Casey Thompson, or will that mean that Hudson Card has really taken big steps forward? I think he's taken steps forward. Uh, I, I, you know, the big thing in this quarterback battle, uh, we've seen it in the in the few practices that we've been able to see. You hear it from sources, and there's video clips floating out there. Uh, you can't deny the arm talent that Quinn Ewers has. And when he's locked in, when everything is right, he looks every bit the kid he looked like in South Lake Carroll just doing it at this level with his ability to just flat out fling the football. Uh, but Hudson Card has by no means been bad this spring. I, I think what's really been interesting to see is the growth of both of these guys, both from different levels. For Hud, for, for Quinn Ewers, it's just kind of digesting the offense one day, taking it in, and then taking that to the classroom or the practice field or whatever the next day, and then just kind of building on it. They haven't tried to give him too much uh, and, and kind of do a sink or swim mentality with him. They've really just kind of steadily brought him along, uh, and I think that's really helped his growth. With Hudson Card, uh, you know, there is some next-level stuff he can do now in terms of really digging in to the kind of the nitty-gritty and getting granular with this offense and what Sark and A.J. Milley and that staff want to do. So, again, two guys on, on different at different stages of growth. But I think the growth trajectory for both has been really good. But there's a reason, Paul. Look, if, if it was – if you just wanted to go today, if Sark had to make a call today, um, you know, you'd say, okay, did he go with the, the you know, you go just go with the guy that's more talented with more upside. But there's a reason why he hasn't called the competition yet, and that's because Hudson Card, I think, in, in, a, in a different way than he did last year, is going to make this a really tough call for Sark at the end of the day. Jeff, you'll bear with me. A, t- a two-parter of a, a question here. First of all, your thoughts on the recent transfer ad- addition of Ajaye Hall, uh, the wide receiver from Alabama. And in line with that, you've got Quinn Ewers, you've got uh, Watts, you've got Billingsley, you've got Nayor, you've got uh, Hall now. Uh, there's been a number of incoming transfers. So your thoughts on Hall and then also of those guys that have come in, who do you think is the most important pickup outside of Ewers, obviously, as a quarterback that they brought in? Yeah, with Hall, Craig, there's no doubt. I mean, this, this, the kid is insanely talented. It, it, it's funny. How, how's this for, for randomness? So, Johnny Hall's high school coach in Florida, I actually played high school football with in Florence, Texas, USA. <laughs> as weird, as crazy wow. as that is. Um, so, I've, I've gotten a little bit of insight on the kid. Um, yeah, he, he is a kid that uh, is a little bit of a wild card, a kid you have to, to reel in, but but that is doable. And it is something that it, it, if he's put in the right environment now, that brings up a whole different ball of wax. Of it, it is the current culture within the football program at Texas the right environment for him to thrive in, time will tell. Uh, but this kid is insanely talented. And in terms of pure talent, I think you're really only talking about Xavier Worthy in terms of being better than him. And and I know that's a relative term, but if you just stack everybody up and look at them on paper, that's the only guy I think that you would definitively take over him. But there's going to be a lot of work to be done to get him to the point where he can get in that top four or five wide receiver group. As far as the other pickups, it's really a tough call for two different reasons for me, Craig. On one hand, I really like Isaiah Nayor, the vertical playmaking dynamic he brings to the table and that he's brought to the table this spring. You know, Xavier Worthy was a guy that could stretch the field, but I think now when you've got a guy that you can stick on the field side and legitimately threaten to take the top off a of defense every play, that can go down the field and make contested catches, a guy that once Jordan Whittington went down last year, Texas really didn't have a guy that could do that. And, you know, Whittington's injury, it was really compounded because when he went out, that was when the, the schedule flipped and you ran into Oklahoma State and Baylor and Iowa State and some of the tougher defenses that you had to play last year. You had to do that without Whittington on the field. So I just think Mayor, the dynamic he brings to the table, is really impressive. With Jaleel Billingsley, I really struggled to remember the last time Texas had a tight end. I mean, you Seriously, you might have to go all the way back to Jermichael Finley to find that like, a tight end Texas had that could legitimately threaten a defense vertically the way this kid can. Now, is he an elite blocker? No. Are there things he, he can't do that you would like an every down tight end to do? Yeah, there are things he can't do you would like an every down tight end to do. But and with as much too tight end personnel as Steve Sarkeesian likes to run, to have a guy that you can put him in line, you can put him at that H-back, you can shift him around, 
you can flex him, put him in the slot, do whatever. Uh, they haven't had a guy like this in a really, really long time, and it's giving them kind of a little buffer uh, to get a couple of young guys like Jatavion Sanders and Gunnar Helm uh, kind of get them up to speed a little bit. So for, for different reasons, uh, I, I think Mayor and Billingsley both are, are huge for this offense. Well, we had Aaron Suttles, who covers Alabama for theathletic.com, and we, you know we asked him about Hall, and we kind of knew a little bit about him, but – you know, he couldn't stop talking or raving about Billingsley and, and did not understand why it didn't work last year at 